Hey guys, Chris with Tillman Family Farms. Um, today we're out here at our egg layers group. Uh, we moved them a few days ago. They're getting pretty close to being moved again, but we're not actually talking about birds today. Today we're gonna talk about troubleshooting electric solar chargers and electric netting from different brands, okay? Most of what we have here is Starkline. Uh, they've been really, really good to us. Um, there's a couple of different things to look for in, in some of these and different traits from different brands and things like that that we've come across. Now, I don't know everything about all this stuff. I don't know everything about every charger. Uh, what I do know is that I've been in the electrical trade for a very, very long time, and it, it's it's not that difficult. You grounding, positive, make sure that you got current, so forth, so on. But we're gonna do everything that we're doing today with just simple, visual and, and a cheap uh tester from tractor supply probably find these at rural king um any other uh, uh farm chain store like that anywhere in the country so uh really simple stuff but we're going to be looking at it now i'm going to show you guys how i hook it up all of the poor things that i do and still have a uh, current and everything and go over some things to look for in your fencing that will kind of help you to know whether or not you're getting good conductivity or if you're not. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna go over all of our visual stuff first. So this is a Starkline poultry netting gate. Uh, it's got a nice PVC frame on it and it has some wiring here with some clamps. Come on guys, we're, we're working here. It, with some clamps that you can take back to your netting to uh, make sure that it's connected and it, everything's in a full loop. But what we use, just for the simplicity of it so that we don't have to use any tools, we take these alligator clips and we just clip it there and there just like that. And we have one on both sides of the gate so that we can keep our loop. Now, I see a lot of people use um, zip ties or even stark line stuff comes with with extra pieces of uh, rope that you can tie these together like this we don't do that i simply use the tail on the netting itself that has all the conductive uh, wires in it i wrap it around and i bring it back and i connect it back to the fencing okay this is what's going to help you keep good current going through everything all of these wires are picking up their current through these metal pieces right here okay and when you when you come to the end of a fence which we'll do that next when you come to the end of a section and, and you're connecting two sections together this right here is going to connect back and forth to each other to help continue a good loop through everything but but that's the gate okay so we're jumping from gate to netting with an alligator clip you don't have to use this I, I, premier one stark line all of these are going to come with some way for you to connect so they got all this extra wire right here so you could drag it back as far as you want to to connect this little clamp thing back to this netting over here to keep your loop going good all right so this setup is a really good example because i'm using a uh, stark line and it, I, i'm not sure how many i've only got a couple of sections of premier one but this is a stark line gate and this is premier one wire so once again i have my connector wrapped around my post and then i've got or I've got my connecting wires wrapped around the post and then back here. Only thing that I'm trying to make sure of is that anything metal, anything metal in the ground and then the fence post itself, uh, the Premier One stakes are different and there's some possibilities uh, of a, uh, a uh, short to ground <clears throat> really easy down there at the bottom, which we'll go over later. All right, so we're gonna go over how much netting I've got here, what charger I use, how I ground it, and the whole entire setup like that. So <clears throat> we are partial to the Gallagher uh, fence chargers. The biggest reason that I've found that I like these fence chargers is because they're not as finicky to grounding as what most fence chargers are. Most fence chargers tell you that you gotta have all these ground rods, you gotta have this wire that stretches out across them. So I'm gonna tell you, Let's see if I can adjust this camera. I'll show you how this thing's grounded. You see this right here? That's all it is. So this comes from the ground on the charger, goes to an alligator clip. I drive a T-post that's maybe eight inches in the ground. 
and I just clip that bad boy on there. No paint, no, I, I don't knock the paint off or anything. And that is a sufficient enough ground for this Gallagher charger. Now, it may be different in super duper dry ground, but we've, we're saturated with, with water right now. We've had, oh gosh, we probably had eight, 10 inches in the last uh, month. So, uh, but anyway, but that's not always the case. This is how I always ground a Gallagher charger. This is an S20. Uh, this is not, this is a point something jewel charger. So it's not even a, a full one jewel. This runs three sections of net of poultry netting. Now you're, so you're talking about a lot of wire. Most of this poultry netting has, um, 11 strands. And when I say 11 strands, I, I, so your, your, uh, horizontal strands on these fences, are what is hot is what carries your current so if it's say 11 strands uh, blah, 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 blah. so you're probably around 1900 feet uh, of continuous wire if these sections are 164 feet so when you do that you start thinking about that then you do um that 18 1900 feet whatever it is and then you divide that into a mile which is uh, 5280 I think is what a mile is per 5280 feet in a mile and then you start dividing how much fencing wire you have per run through here I mean all of a sudden you really don't have all that much so everybody that's running a 20 mile charger or a 30 mile charger you have got a ton of charger on this netting and it should be plenty um, I know a lot of these charger companies that are not associated with netting give netting a bad name or whatever, but they're just mad that they didn't come up with the idea. Uh, so the reality of, of a small charger like this, um, I want to say these are supposed to be, I, I, and I'm just shooting from the hip here, S20. So maybe it's a 20 mile charger. I don't know. Um, but we've never had a problem. The S20s we've got three or four of them. We use them on pigs, chickens, uh, goats, sheep. We use them on all sorts of stuff and never have any problems. But I would like to see most everybody using the power clip on these things to go to the metal connection at the end of the fence. But it doesn't have to. If you energize one, it's going to flow through everything and, and connect everything. So I'm going to show you, I'm going I'm to see if in this daylight, um that this little cheap uh, tester that i've got right here if we can actually see the lights on it but let me show you how this is so this is three sections an s20 very 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 moderate grounding right here and uh, i'm gonna get everything hooked back up and we'll put the tester on it and see if we can see these lights on it and show you and then i'm gonna walk you around and show you how poorly this netting is up here i mean uh, it should be grounded out in several places but it's really not all right, so there's the charger. There's the ground. And there is how it's connected to the fence. So in, if this is, um, you know, everything's working correctly, this little light right here should be flashing green. There's a couple of reasons why this thing will flash red. If you're uh, grounded out somewhere, it should be flashing red. If this battery is not charged enough to energize all this fencing, it will be flashing red. The The red is, is just telling you, hey, you, you need to take a look here and see what's going on. So we're gonna turn it on. And I don't know that it's, the camera's really not picking up the light, but I can assure you that it's, it's kind of flashing green. Huh. Oh, Georgia Sun's not helping out. Anyhow, so it's flashing green. So we're going to break the tester out and see if we can't see what the tester says. All right, so this tester is pretty simple. This this little thing that I'm wiggling around right here gets shoved into the ground, and then that little silver hook hangs on one of the wires. Whoop, yep, it's on. Chicken's just got it. Um, but anyhow, so... I'm going to stick this end in the ground and we'll hang this on the fence and see if we can't catch these lights and see what we got going on here. All right, so you just bury that bad boy up to the red plastic. And then we're going to take this tester and we're going to hook it on those lines. Oh, yeah, we're not going to be able to see it in the light, but yeah, it's not showing light very well. But that's the 
Now I can see them flashing, but you just can't see them. The camera's not picking it up very well. Anyhow, that's how simple it is to use this tester, okay? So you don't have to go out and buy one of these really, really expensive digital electric fence testers. But if you are gonna go out and buy a tester like that, make sure that you buy a fence tester. This is a different uh, electrical voltage than what you're gonna get with a, um, a multimeter at the store. Multimeter at the store, you test this stuff, you're probably gonna blow the fuse just about every time. All right, so I wanna talk about a couple things uh, as we're moving around this fence and I wanna to go to where we got some stuff connected and talk about it, but uh, there's so many different measures when it comes to electricity. So this fencing that you have here, it, it, it all works off of DC voltage. DC voltage is direct current, which means that as it flows, it goes in a straight line. So what happens with DC current, when you touch it, it has a tendency to pop and push you away. That's why it works great with electric netting. Now, the current that's in your house is called AC current. That's an alternating current. So it flows like this. It goes up and down, up and down. But what it tends to do when you touch it is it contends or it tends to contract your muscles or whatever's muscles uh, that touch it. So it doesn't push you away. It makes you kind of lock up. So that's the difference in the voltages. Let's go over this uh, connection right here and then we will back up and talk about um, jewels a little bit and what jewels are, what they're worth and all that kind of stuff. All right, so like I said, this is two different fences, okay? And, and there's a lot of things I'm gonna be able to show you here. I don't wanna get into comparison of Starkline and, and Premier One. We've done some videos like that in the past, but there's a lot of things we can talk about right here. So number one, this section on my left here is a Starkline poultry netting premium poles. Uh, it's a little bit taller than the, um, premium netting from Premier One. So you see the difference in the height. All of this stuff is, is basically the same, the way it goes together. So you can see right here, that's the way that these things should be connected. I, I, I always twist them up. It's a little bit difficult with them being different heights, but I always twist them up the best I can. It helps hold the poles together. You don't have a third step with zip ties or ropes or whatever, but this connection is the biggest thing right here. You need to connect every fence section that way so that it's nice and tight. You don't want them to be all bent and bowed out of shape and, and it just won't be any good, okay? Um, so let's talk about these poles because there's a problem, kind of an underlying problem with the Premier One and, and Starkline's even got poles like this too that are, that are PVC. But what you have here, so this is a Starkline foot, okay? This whole piece, so it's got two metal spikes it's got this nice big plastic step on it. And then the metal comes up into this fiberglass pole so far. It's metal under this. A lot of people are like, oh, that plastic's gonna break. It's metal under this. Listen to me, there's metal under this. It's just like the metal from this pole. But the problem with this pole is that there's nothing protecting it. So you get this little bitty thing that normally is on the arch of your foot when you're pushing them in, and it just is crappy. So. The step on the premium poles from Starkline is way better. And also what that creates, if you look right here, okay? So these, oh, hang on, I'm laying down on the ground here. These right here are the conductive lines that go, this is how they connect. So when you have all of this, look down here. You see this? That's conductive. See that? That's metal. What happens a lot of times is all these things work their way down and then all of a sudden this one jumps over and it's on the metal. It grounds out the whole entire fence. This is one of the biggest problems that I see with this stuff. And, and the first time that I found it, it took me almost five days to find out what was wrong with it. I was about to throw all this crap away. And, and it was this, it was, you see how easy it slides up and down. It had just slid down on this and it, it, this is the premier one there's nothing to protect it there it just grounds it out and the whole thing is just shot so that pole thing down at the bottom with the metal spikes that's probably one of the biggest problems 
when you find fencing that's grounded out. Your charger is going to be throwing a red flashing light. Uh, you'll probably be able to measure a little bit of voltage, but it's not going to be near enough to do anything. Um, so it, it, it's just a, a whole big craziness right there when that happens. And it's really, really hard to miss. Trust me. I walk this stuff up and down, up and down, up and down. I just happened to be working on it late and it was getting dark and literally I was walking by it and I could see a little arc every time the fence pulsed. I could see the arc to that stake and I was like, what in the world's happening? I got a flashlight out, started looking at it and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. This is the simplest thing in the world. And it just beat me over the head for, you know, days and days and days on end. So anyhow, I'm gonna show you how this fencing is kind of laying on the ground in some places and it's still charging just like it should. So. Let's take a look at that now. All right, here's a perfect example, okay? So this is a little bit of a rise and all of this netting is fine. And we actually had to put a, a separate uh, fence post in here to keep the netting pulled down so the chickens just didn't come out from under it. But as you go up the little hill and you got this one section here that's on the ground. So this is a conductive wire and this is a conductive wire. They're laying on the ground on the ground in the grass so i mean this stuff sometimes with the right charger is not as finicky as what a lot of people think it is all right so let's talk about jewels for a second um and i and i'm not gonna so we don't use the measurement of jewels very often uh in the electrical trade but jewels are the measure of energy equal to one watt to push electrical current a certain distance. Can't remember exactly what that distance is, but it, it's a, um, so it equals a watt and there's a, there's a uh, really simple formula that you can Google and there's probably even a, a calculator out there that you can plug in all kinds of different stuff to get what you want. But joules are just the force to push something. So all electricity has joules. It's not something that's all of a sudden fancy and just for electric fence chargers. Everybody gets all bent out of shape about jewels. Um, it's really not that, that difficult. One thing that is important to know about electricity and fence chargers is voltage drop, okay? So it, it's kind of the same thing. Just say that you take a baseball and you roll it across the grass. Well, after so long, there's there's so much resistance that that ball is going to slow down okay so envision voltage leaving its source and the more wire that it flows over the more it slows down so that's voltage drop that's why in the electrical trade we have different uh mathematical equations to figure out if a run of wire is so long in order for it to have enough current to get there, we have a mathematical equation to come up with what size wire that needs to be. The further that the current has to go, the bigger the wire needs to be for the same amount of voltage to travel from this end to that end without any voltage drop. All right, so what does voltage drop have to do with all this stuff? Um, you know, we were talking about uh, how much wire is in a fence and how many miles the charger is supposed to charge and all that stuff. The, the more netting that you put up, um, if your netting was not connected in a circle, just say that you had um, a chicken coop and you wanted to run your netting to this side of it and secure this fencing to where it's not grounded out and then you want to run one to the other side so it's not tied together. So what you're gonna end up with is that at this charger, you might have 7,000 volts DC, strong as it can be, and then you may go to the other end and you may have 4,000 volts DC, depending on how much wire you've got between the charger all the way around to the end of it. You should not have that problem if they are tied together. So at every fence section and every end, if the fences are connected properly, then you should have current flowing from one section to the next. Then you go all the way around and you connect it all back, whether you have a gate or it's all just netting. If you keep that flow of current, which we would consider a closed circuit, 
you can, um, it, it's just a constant steady flow. So it's all the way back to its source. So you're not gonna have much of any voltage drop there. Um, but if you start it here and end it way out somewhere, you're gonna have voltage drop. So uh, that's something to keep in mind if you're just gonna be running a straight length of fence, you know, uh, into oblivion, I guess you could say, just forever. Uh, by the time you get out to the end of it, you're gonna have some voltage drop. So the whole reason that we're doing this video, um, we have a viewer that uh, got into some netting uh, for, I guess, uh, varmint control type stuff. They've, they've got a really big garden area that they've stretched out netting around and are trying to control uh, animals getting into their garden. Uh, I'm, I think I'm kind of interpreting a, a market garden type setup. So they're, they're really trying to protect their investment there. Um, and what they've done is they've mixed and matched a little bit. Uh, that's why I wanted to do this video with this setup because this is mixed and matched with the same two products that they have. Um, but the one charger that they had from a, a specific company, I don't care for all that much, even though we do a lot of stuff with them and, and really, really respect those guys. But that charger, I, we've, we've had one and we've had nothing but problem after problem with it. Um, no offense to them, the guys that we deal with, customer service and all that stuff, they didn't design the product. So, I, you know, you can't, can't blame them. Um, but uh, they suggested a different charger to him, and that charger is a much larger charger. I don't have any um, experience with it, but I did read up on it. It's got a really good track record. I read some really good reviews on it. Uh, so, you know, I don't think that the charger's the problem. The instructions for that charger, however, uh, had a very elaborate grounding uh, diagram, which called for three ground rods that were I was it was eight to 10 feet apart. So um, that, it almost kind of concerns me a little bit because if these chargers are that finicky to ground, I mean, you could have all sorts of stuff that, that could be an issue there. But um, when we talk about chargers, one of the biggest things that I want to, I want to say about chargers is that once you pull it out of the box, it is not ready to go. Most of these chargers will give you instructions to leave this thing turned off, get all your batteries and everything connected in it through their diagrams and their instructions. And then they want you to set this thing out in the direct sunlight for about three days. Some of them come with a little um, AC charger. It's got a little charging port on the on the uh, on the solar charger, solar generator, uh, somewhere for you to plug it in and plug it into the wall. Those are fine. I know the start line charger I think does that, but the ones that you just sit out in the sun that collect the solar energy like they're going to be doing from now until the battery is just no good, um, those tend to work out a little bit better, and that's the way that the Gallagher chargers are. So every time we buy a charger. Uh, we try to, to get it in enough time that we're not rushed to have to have it. We'll get it set out in the sun and let it charge all the way to max capacity because what's going to happen is if we take it right out of the charger, let it sit in the sun for a day, then go out here and plug it up on a fence, all we've done is compromise the life of that battery. And that battery is going to be working overtime to even try to get to where it should be to get a good start. Um, or we'll plug it up to too much fencing or too much wiring and it's gonna flash a red light because the battery does not have enough juice to charge that long of a run. So that's the thing about chargers. Um, the grounding, all those ground rods, I'm a, I'm a fan of grounding when it comes to buildings, but that's a lot of grounding for an electric charger. We've got one on the property that, that required that much and I set it up that way and I've never had a problem with it. Um, it's a charger that stays in one spot, never moves. It, it, it's it's uh, kind of helping protect a, a beat up wooden fence that we have at the road up here. But um, that's a lot of grounding. Uh, it's just a lot. Uh, so in my opinion, the Gallagher chargers are, are not near as finicky to ground. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I can only attest really for the products that we use. Uh, the fence netting is really, really simple. Um, <laughs> The, the metal connections at the end of each fence. You may wanna check how they clamp on to the bundle of wires to make sure that that's good and tight. Um, 
keep the fencing up off the ground. Don't let it touch anything else that is conductive. That's grass, that's um, any types of fabric that may be wet, uh, any types of metal posts, the metal spikes at the bottom of your fiberglass posts. There's a whole array of things that this fence could touch that would cause it to not charge from the charger, but make sure your charger is charged. Get your charger grounded. Take your hot probe from your charger and test it with a tester. Don't just touch it. I mean, you, you and I can feel, you know, 12 volts of DC power and, and think, holy crap, we just got shocked, but it's nothing to this fencing. Um, you need to know how many volts is testing. If you're getting 5,000 or better, you're, you're pretty well in the range, but you should be getting six to probably eight or 9,000 volts uh, DC off of these chargers. Um, once you've tested the charger itself, when you test a section of netting, the best testing is to set that netting up all the way until it is connected back with itself. Complete closed circuit. Put it on there, get it tested. If you're using one of these cheap testers, just like a minute ago, we couldn't see it in the daylight, go and test it at when it's starting to get dark outside so you can see those lights. You may begin to charge and you just don't even really know it. But um, I, I mean, I'm sitting here beating my head against the wall, trying to help this, this guy out, uh, figure out what's wrong. But these things are, these setups are so simple that it's, it's difficult to come up with the exact way that, that he's got it set up. And, and you know, I, I have this feeling it's just gonna be some little small something, man. And I really hope that you figure it out. Um, I'm hoping that going over the way that I set it up and all that stuff is really gonna help. And, and maybe you'll come across some kind of uh, aha moment and, and be able to see what's happening and where and all that kind of stuff. But that's pretty much it, guys. These these uh, systems are pretty simple. Um, you know, buy quality stuff, buy quality products. And, and once you get it figured out, you'll probably never have a problem again. <laughs> so, but anyhow, um, this got a little lengthy, but I appreciate you guys watching. If you have questions, specific questions about electric chargers, electric fencing, electric, you know, uh, wiring systems, anything like that, I'd be more than happy to, to answer any questions I can. Leave your comments and, and questions in the, the uh, comment section down below, and we'll do the best that we can to get to them. Uh, we're getting a, a little bit more flow of comments and things like that over the 380 something videos we've got so it's getting a little bit more difficult to keep up with them but i do the best that i can and i promise i'll get to them eventually it may not be this week maybe a month from now but i'll get to them uh, but we appreciate you guys watching if you don't mind please go down and like and subscribe and ring that bell so you'll see all the videos we put out and we will see you on the next video